Hey guys, hope you're doing well. Um, thank you for joining me today. As always, I'm really glad that you jo joined me. Uh, let's pray before we get into the word today. Father, thank you for being with us today, Lord God. You are the God of our source and not our supplement, God. We praise you and we bless you, Father. Permeate the atmosphere like you never have in one of my sermons before. Let this sermon reach the world. Only do what you gotta do. Speak to us today, Lord Jesus, in a mark and special way. So we can say that this day our lives will change. Do what only you can do. Say something to us that is different, but say it all at the same time. Lord God, you know that we need you. And we know, you know that we need a word from you, all of us, myself included. Speak to me, speak through me. In the name of Jesus, amen. Hi guys, a few weeks ago, um, I was reading um, Get Happy by Judy Garland. Uh, I posted it on my Rachel's Reads um, page. Um, if you guys don't know, Rachel's Reads is where I, I post practically everything I read. Like... Um, um, right now I'm reading something called The Tea Rose, which is awesome. It's a very long book. It's 28 hours listening time. Um, I read audiobooks most of the time because really I can't hold a book. I'm not like, um, that's the only reason I don't read books books because I can't hold them, so, but now I'm reading the tea rose, and I posted that on uh, Rachel's Reads, but a couple weeks ago, I read Judy Garland's uh, uh, book, book, not her book, somebody wrote it about her, um, called Get Happy. It was recommended to me by, um, one of the ladies that work here, that that work where I live, sorry, not here, um, one of the ladies that work with me, so I read it, and as, like, I love celebrity biographies, um, I think, I think it's very interesting to get to know the lives of people. Not only famous people, I think the lives of people are interesting because everybody has a story. It doesn't matter who you are. If you're, if you're older than five, you have a story. Um, some of us have typical stories. Some of us have amazing stories of comeback and whatever. So, as I was reading this this, uh, this, um, biography on Judy Garland, for those of you youngins <laughs> who don't know who Judy Garland is, she played Dorothy in The Wizard of Oz, she was also in a couple of other things, Meet Me in St. Louis, and all those, all those, uh, actresses from the mid-30s to to the 50s. Um, she was in all, all those classic films, uh, musicals and stuff, but her, her most famous one was The Wizard of Oz. Uh, she was Dorf, Dorothy. She was about 15 when she did that uh, movie in like 1938. Uh, she had a tough life, very tough life, full of drugs and um, full of uh, just needing to be liked by the crowd. And when she wasn't liked, uh, according to the book, 
uh, she went off the ra the rails and st started going absolutely, um, absolutely. She was very disturbed when she wasn't like when people liked her. She was fine. I remember this part in the book uh, where she had gained a reputation of being hard to work with uh, and a director didn't, um, a director wanted to work with her so every day uh, he put flowers in her dressing room set with little kind notes with little kind things to say just to keep her um, happy and from to show up on time or whatever. And he was asked, how, how did you get Judy to behave herself? And it's like, well, I just treated her with kindness. So, yeah, so that's, so that's what, what he did to get her to show up on time and not do drugs and everything. Just, just to show you that, like, this is not my sermon, but kindness for people goes a long way. And how you treat people matters. Like, how you treat people when nobody is looking matters. Um, okay, but, like, back to my sermon. So I was reading this book on this famous actress and all her marriages and all her drama that went along with her. And they say now that she could have had bipolar, that it was probable that she had bipolar, but nobody, but it wasn't popular then, they didn't have a name for it. So, as I was reading this book about Judy Garland, this famous actress, and she was saying, I love it when people need me. He, she said, I, according to this author, she said, I need, I need to be needed by people. And that, that got me thinking of, um, when people are your source and they love you, it's the greatest when when people are your source and they love you, it's the greatest eye. But when they're your source and they don't like you, it's the lowest low you could ever think of. And um, I was thinking of uh, some some we need people as a supplement. So. We need people, but they need to be a supplement. Like, when I say a supplement, I mean they come along beside God to, to bring out his purpose in your lives, and to, in our lives, and to encourage us, and to um, just be our cheerleaders. But they're not our source. God is our source, and when and when people are our source, we're in trouble uh, because sometimes people love us, sometimes people don't. And I was thinking of Judy. I was thinking of, oh, I wish I could go back to 1935 and tell her, Judy, people cannot be your source because sometimes they love you. And sometimes I hate you. Um, but the thing with God is he's constant. He's constant. He never gives up on you. So that's why what, what he says about you needs to be your source of strength, your source of peace, your source of, um, your source of validation. Because God's opinion, beloved, never changes about you. So, as I was thinking about this actress and how she needed to be needed by people and loved by people or else 
she would she would go off the rails. Um, I was thinking of how in our society we have so many people that just need to be needed by people. And I'm not saying that it's not a wonderful thing or a necessary thing to be needed, to feel loved, to feel validated, to feel like what you do matters. But what I am saying, though, is if people are your source, if people is where your validation and your love for yourself or in your and your thoughts about yourself come from, um, beloved, you'll be sorely disappointed because I could love you today and not love you tomorrow. But that doesn't change who you are and who God has created you to be. So, as I was thinking about this actress, the Lord says, um, the Lord brought a question to my mind. He said, am I your source where things come from or am I your supplement? If God is your source, you'll never run, run dry. And if people are your supplement, you'll never run dry. Because they will back up, they will reinforce what God says about you if they are your supplement. And, but if they are your source, um, and God is your supplement, that, that will cause problems, because your source is the place where your needs are met, where your, where your physical needs are met, where your emotional needs are met, where your spiritual needs are met. So, if your source is the place where it starts and your needs are met, and that starts with people, and they love you, that's great, but if your source uh, doesn't like you, or feels that what feels like who you are is not enough, you're in trouble, because you kind of depend on that. But if people come along as your supplement to re- and God is your source, they come along to reinforce and to be your come alongside God to re- to reinforce who you are. Um, that will make you a stronger person. Because we need people. We all need people. God works through people. Um, this whole Jesus and me mentality, I don't need anyone, is a crock of garbage. Because we all need people. We all need, um, we need doctors. We need lawyers. We need all those people. But they need to be a supplement. They need to come alongside what God has already said said about us. They need to be our, our supplement um, to to back up, to to reinforce, to actually come alongside us and come on like God, God has said about us, so that way, even if people drop out, if they're our supplement, um, if they drop out, we still have the source, and we get what we need from the source. It's like taking vitamins. I take magne- magnesium and calcium. Now, um, because I can't drink milk because I'm lactose intolerant. The supplement of my calcium comes alongside my body and gives it what the calcium it needs. And because I'm getting older, I need 
magnesium for for my bones and calcium. Together they work as supplements with my body to give me the, the nutrients of the calcium and magnesium that I need. So my body produces calcium on its own and I may get a bit of calcium from the food I need. I need, but because it's not enough, those supplements, those vitamin supplements, come along to give me a bit more help of what I need. But the source of my calcium is my body, and the food I eat is the premium source of calcium, but the, um, but the supplements come along to reinforce and give me more of what I need. So that's that's what I mean when when people are the supplement and not the source. They come along to reinforce what the source is already giving you. So get what you need from the source, which is God, and then let people come along to be your supplement. So. But the danger happens, what happens most of the time is people are your source and God is your supplement. When people are your source and they dry up or they don't like you or they put dislikes or whatever or they don't approve of what you've done and they're your source, you are crushed. You have nowhere to go. Um, and if God is your supplement, he just comes along to reinforce what people have already put in you. And if people have put something bad in you, and he's your supplement, you may think that, oh, uh, God feels that way too because he's reinforcing what people have said. But no, it's because he is your supplement, not your source. So what the, the supplement comes along to reinforce what the source has put in place. So that's why you think God is against you when God is not for you because of what people told you, and because they're your source, you tend to believe what the source says, and the supplement comes along to reinforce you, uh, to reinforce what the, what the um, source has said. So if people are your source, and they're saying, oh my god, you look so fat, or you are whatever negative thing, you tend to think that the supplement God, God thinks the same way about you because people have said this, so God must feel a, uh, this way about me too, or I had, or I had a bad parent or whatever, so how can God love me because you made that parent your source when they are supposed to be your supplement. Humans are supposed to come along beside a person and reinforce what God has said about them. But if God is your source, even if everyone walks away, you still get the nutrients you need from the source. So even if my calcium and that magnesium vitamins um, are finished, I still get calcium from my body, and I can still get calcium from other supplements, but if, if something goes wrong with the calcium in my body, and the source is off, that's when I have uh, deficiencies, and that's where the problem becomes so like so some of us love Jesus but 
he is still our supplement. He comes along beside what people have said, and we we bleed the poison of what people have said into what God thinks about us, because because to some of us, Jesus is our supplement, not our source. Jesus comes along to reinforce what people have said, and he didn't create what people have said. We need to switch that around. Make the Lord the source. Your source of strength, your source of validation, your source of peace, your source of joy. When you make God the source, which is the, the element that everything comes from, the element that everything flows from, and people in your su supplement, they come to back up what God has said about you. That's when your life will take a turn for the better. And he wants me to say, make, to make him your source today. The, the reason you're tired and running out of energy is because you've let people, you've let the world, you've let its crappy values define you. You've let that be your source and God be your supplement. Change those around and then you can understand um, that, you, that your source you, will never leave you, never forsake you, and your source will bring the right supplements around you to really reinforce, to really uh, prop up what he's put inside you. Um, and he wants me to say, your source will never run dry if it's God. Your source will never run dry. Your source will never run dry. And the water is always available. Ah. It reminds me of the woman at the well. Uh, w when she asked for water, she said, he said, the water I give you is not a physical water, but it's the water of the Ho Holy Spirit. And and because our body is 70% water, um, he wants he wants you to know that the water of the spirit will never run dry. People's water, people's patience, people's joy, people's tolerance about you will run dry. But his water of the Holy Spirit will never run dry. And there's a there's a song that says, Come to this Okay, it says, There is a river that flows from deep within There is a fountain that saved my soul from sin to this water, is a rest time. There is a river 
not gonna run dry he's never gonna walk out on you make him the source today the source is the element where everything everything flows from your peace your joy your validation of yourself your thoughts of yourself so maybe why you've been running dry is you let people be the source and God be the supplement. And maybe God is not even the supplement. Maybe you don't even know the Lord. And in, I suggest to you, if you want to get to know the Lord, just tell him, Lord, I want to know you. And just be honest with him. Um, uh, just be honest with him about where you are in your life and that you want to get to know him. Um, the Lord, the Bible says to believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and he will come in and change your life. And, and I've, and I've, um, been in the situation where you're like, Lord, I don't know if I believe, I don't know if this is real, but something, something about what Rachel said about source is, is really getting at me. So even if you don't believe yet, that's okay. Just tell him where you are, just tell him uh, whatever you're feeling, whatever you're thinking, just tell him. And you may, and it may look stupid to, to you um, when you first do it, because I know prayer is kind of stupid to people um, when they first do it, because you're talking to the ceiling, or you're talking to the sky, or you're talking to yourself. But it doesn't matter if it looks stupid. Isn't it? Isn't your life more valuable than looking stupid? You're in trouble, and you know you've made people the source for too long, and it's made you unhappy and totally miserable. Um. So, if you're desperate enough. Try it. You'll you'll see, and just tell him what you feel. Just tell him where you are. Just tell him that you want to be with him. Whatever you're feeling, just say it. You know, a lot of churches do something called the sinner's prayer, and they were they say repeat a prayer after me. I don't do that because um, I think the Lord above everything wants honesty from the person and because I don't know where every single person is in their faith or whatever I don't presume to put anything in your mouth that is not is not where you are so uh, Rather than a bunch of recycled words from me that sound like a cute prayer, just pour your heart out to, to him, wherever he is. And if you need my help after that to say, Rachel, what do I do next? 
then you can message me, you can Facebook comment, you can do whatever, uh, do whatever you want to do to contact me. You can contact me on Facebook, you can contact me on YouTube, say, hey, I heard the sermon, um, you know, I'd like more information. I would be glad to assist you in that. But first step, you have to just pour out your heart to him. Wherever you are, like, even if you don't know if this thing is real, even if you feel strange, even if you've been an atheist for years, or an agnostic for years, but something I'm saying is like getting to you, niggling at your spirit, your spirit. That's him knocking on the door of your heart and, uh, and telling you to, to let him in. You won't be disappointed. He loves you. He loves you so much, beloved. You, you have no idea how much he loves you. It's just, I can't even tell you how much he loves you. And it's just amazing. So, so pour out your heart to him. And if you need help, let me know. Take care. <laughs> Oh, mm-hmm.